Hi there, it's Greg with another Vim screencast and today I want to intro a plugin called Vim Slime, which as you can see here comes from Emacs. Uh, this is the Vim version of it. If you haven't heard of Slime before, uh, the idea of it is to provide you with a way to evaluate text from Vim in another context. So you hit a binding, the code will be evaluated, and the idea is that you can edit the code and reevaluate it, edit the code and reevaluate it in a very tight loop um, and iterate towards the behavior that you want. Um, without leaving Vim. So I think probably the simplest way to understand what it does is to, going to be to see it in action. So let's 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 do that. Let's fire up Vim and let's make a file, some file, and let's put some expression in it that we're going to evaluate. So the binding is Control C, Control C. So I'm going to hit that. Um, you'll see down the bottom left here it asks me for a socket name and it asks me for a target pane. Uh, both of these questions are related to Tmux, which is what I'm currently running in. Um, by default, Vim Slime would use screen, uh, it, and it's using Tmux because I configured it to do that. But I, I think they work basically the same. So it's asking me there whether I want to send the text to the right. So it would take this expression, one plus one, and send it over to the right. And if you look on the right, I've got a shell. So sending it over there is not going to do anything useful, but let's do it anyway and see what happens. So I hit enter, and you see that it tried to evaluate the expression. So one plus one, it tried to run a command called one, which is useless. So to make this useful, we've got to put an environment here that can evaluate JavaScript. So I've got Node running, the JavaScript engine there on the right, and now when I hit the binding again, you'll notice a few things. One is, first of all, that it worked. It sent the string over again, evaluated it, printed the result. Great. Um, the other is, it didn't ask me those questions. It only asked me the configuration questions the first time I used Slime in any given session. Um, and the other thing to note is that Vim did not lose focus at any time. So for example, I can now change that expression and hit the binding again, change it a bit more, hit the binding again, and it will evaluate it each time, but Vim never loses focus, so I can iterate very quickly. And at this point, I've basically turned Vim into a calculator, which is probably not the way people would usually use Slime. So I'm gonna show you a slightly more realistic example, which is using Slime to make code. So let's make an adder here and we're going, to, we're going to test this adder and we're going to make sure it's got a bug so that uh, we can see a few iterations. So I hit the binding there and the function has been sent over and you'll see that it exists obviously um, and I can call it. So let's call it but I don't get the result that I expected. I add one and two and I would expect to get three but I only got minus one so let's grab this code because that seems like something that should be a, a test case right? Um, so now when I hit the binding on the test case, I can rerun it um, and I can run it as many times as I want just hitting the binding. So now I have both an implementation and a so-called test case, a lightweight test case, uh, that manifests a bug in the implementation. And so let's do some iteration. Let's imagine I suspect an off by one error, so I fix that in inverted commas uh, and then I rerun the test case and I see it's still wrong because one and two added to zero, which is not expected. You can imagine I iterate a few more times and I eventually wind up with this implementation that I send over and voila, now it works. Um, so one thing to note about this is that this is kind of like TDD, but I don't necessarily have to, to commit these test cases. I mean, I may decide that I want to have some more of them and then uh, send them over and eventually these get copied and pasted into a test file and become part of a test suite but they could also just be like artifacts of me implementing that I can delete at the end, right? It's really up to me how I use this, this, this plugin. Um, and in fact, it's limited only by my imagination and the need to send over something that is syntactically valid. Um, so for example, I could turn this into a markdown file. Um, and let's put a heading here, and let's say here's some code, and let's put that example in again and send it. And you see that when I hit the binding, it sent one plus one over and evaluated it. And of course it worked because the REPL on the right doesn't know where the text came from. It doesn't reject it because it was marked down. All it thinks is, I have some text, I need to evaluate it. Um, and so that means I can do absurd things like set the file type to prolog and reevaluate the string. And of course it still works because it really is just arbitrarily slinging text back and forth. Um, so one thing to bear in mind there is that if I send garbage, I'm gonna, get garbage. So if I send that over, it's a syntax error because that's not valid JavaScript. And in fact, I think this also illustrates why even though it doesn't matter what the file type is, 
it does make sense to put it in the actual file type that you're writing the code in because the whole reason we're using Vim, right, is to get the help that you get from the editor based on the type of the file. So you'll notice that as soon as I change into JavaScript, it highlighted a couple of syntax problems for me. Um, and the real, the real issue here is um, that the heading is not valid JavaScript and also uh, this thing down the bottom here is not valid JavaScript. So now we have valid JavaScript. Um, and you know, as I type, I get immediate feedback when I make a mistake, unlike over here in the REPL, where I don't get any feedback at all until I hit the enter key. Uh, so how does Vim Slime know what to send? You'll notice that uh, when I sent, when I hit the binding on this line, it just sent the, the function, but when I hit the binding on the function, it sends the whole function. Um, so what it's actually doing there is it's using Vim's definition of a paragraph to decide what to send. So uh, just to put my test cases back again, um, just so I have two of these. Let's make that, um, let's make the, oops, let's make that a bit different. Um, if I hit the binding here, it's sent both over. <laughs> it's because I need a comma here instead of a, uh, a plus. So let's hit the binding again. Um, so it's sent both over at the same time. And like I said, it's because Vim is using, it's Vim Slime is using Vim's definition of a paragraph, specifically um, an outer paragraph to decide what to send. So you can see what that is by hitting V to go into visual mode and then A and P to select the current outer paragraph. And you'll see there it's selected both lines. If I had a blank line between them and I did VAP again, it only selects one of them. And that's because Vim's definition of paragraph here is uh, consecutive lines that are uh, separated by empty lines. So that usually does what you want. Um, if I go to the top again, let's imagine this function has a to-do in here and then it has a blank line. VAP no longer selects the whole function. So if I hit the binding here, oops, um, it sends the bottom half of the function which is not valid syntax. So in a situation like this, you have to enter visual mode yourself. Um, and then when you hit the binding, it'll send the whole thing over. And you can then use it. Okay, so that shows probably what I think is the core use case for Vim Slime, which is iterating on code. Uh, but I think another use case is just using it to do transformations that are easier to do in REPL than they are to do in Vim. Uh, so I, I have a good example and a bad example. Uh, because as I said earlier, this thing is limited only by your imagination because it's just sending arbitrary text around. Um, so let's, let's, let's imagine a good thing and a bad thing just to kind of show the limits of the tool. So a good thing might be that I, I want to URL encode a string like uh, foo bar baz. And I can't remember how to URL encode, but I know that Node knows how to do it. Um, and so basically what that would look like would be turning this into JavaScript that uh, URL encodes. So let's, let's require the query string module, which comes with Node and let's call escape and let's send all of that over and at that point I see that spaces get URL encoded as percent twenty um, and so if I wanted to I could you know, copy this and use it or I could just remember now that I know that uh, space is percent twenty just do the edit myself so that's an example maybe not a great example but an example of using slime to do some kind of a useful transformation for you. And maybe if it's something that you did super often, you might even set up a mapping to just do that automatically for you. Uh, but I also have an example of something that uh, is like a terrible idea um, because you know some things you'll try and Vim Slime and they end up being a bad idea. So let's have a look at one of those. So um, I've got uh, a big blob of text here and let's imagine that I want to turn all of this into uppercase. Now it's possible to do that in Vim, uh, but let's just say I can't remember how to do it but I'm gonna use JavaScript because I know it's easy in JavaScript. So I turn the whole thing into a string by wrapping it in quotes. I call to uppercase on it and I'm ready to send it over with slime. So I hit the binding and voila. I did get uppercase text, but I also got it in a format that is not particularly easy to consume because you can see here that the REPL printed it out as a bunch of strings that are concatenated. So that's kind of painful, right? Um, if I wanna grab this, I've gotta grab the whole thing and then manipulate it in Vim, which is going to be pretty painful. Um, so there's always more than one way to do it, but I think uh, you know one that occurs to me that's relatively straightforward is just to join all these onto one line using Shift J, um, and then 
find all of the quotes, the spaces, the plus signs, uh, then another space, then another quote, and then replace them with nothing. Then delete the other quotes, and I've got what I wanted. But that was painful, right? So this is an example of bad use case for slime. Um, and you know, in this concrete example, it would have been much better to uh, just do it the Vim way, right? So let's delete the quotes there and I'd go somewhere to the end. Okay, so this is what we originally had. Uh, I think the best way to do this in Vim would be something like G shift U dollars, right? So G shift U will uppercase a motion and then dollars just took me to the end of the line. So that, that's the way I would have preferred to do that um, in this case. Um, so that's Vim Slime. Uh, it's not something that I use often, but it's a pretty nifty tool to have in the toolbox for those occasions when, when it comes in handy. So I hope it's useful to you as well. Um, and please subscribe if you want to see more of this content. See you later.